as you can see, the tree helps us not only to check our own Kubernetes manifest that we write, but also to check Kubernetes manifest that we take from the app. Let's be honest here. Getting started with Kubernetes and following Kubernetes best practices is tough. Whether you're working alone or within a team, you will have to ensure that you're following best practices so no vulnerabilities, security loopholes are introduced within your production environment. You want to ensure that the quality of your deployments is at the highest standard. And that's exactly why I started looking at standardization and validation tools. Specifically in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Daytree. Now, the tree allows you to verify your Kubernetes deployments, your Kubernetes manifests, as well as your Helm charts before they are deployed to your production environment. This way, you can be ensured that everything that's deployed within your production environment follows Kubernetes best practices and standards. This is day 39 of 100 Days of Kubernetes. For those who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Anais. 100 Days of Kubernetes is a challenge where we aim to learn something related to Kubernetes across 100 days. Let's get started with day three. Now, before we take a look at what day three is, how we can get started, how we can use it, and how we can scale it, we want to take a look at our development workflow and see where the tree fits in. Let's assume here's our development team. Now, the development team is any team in the organization that has to write code and Kubernetes manifests. And those code and the Kubernetes manifests are pushed to our Git repository. Now, those might be in GitHub, or GitLab, or whatever the organization or you as an individual uses. Usually, we are developing on a test branch, on any feature branch or fixture that we are developing on and pushing our initial code to. Then we want to promote our code, anything that has to do and stored within Git from our test branch to our main branch. Now, while we promote it from our test branch to our main branch, we want to ensure that our code passes certain checks. And that's usually done with our CI. CD pipelines. Our CICD pipelines allow us to automate our tests and ensure that our tests pass before our new code is promoted from the main branch, deployed to our development in our production cluster or our staging environment. Now, usually the DevOps team or the SRE team is responsible to set up these checks. And as part of those checks, we can set up the tree. Usually, it's quite a manual task to verify that our Kubernetes manifests follow best practices and do not introduce any vulnerabilities to our cluster, to our deployments. The tree will run checks on our Kubernetes manifests to ensure they follow best practices before it will promote through the CICD pipeline the new deployment to our development cluster. Now, if checks should not pass, let's say the tree is not happy with our Kubernetes manifests, those checks will fail. This will allow our development team to implement better practices and to improve upon what is currently wrong within our Kubernetes manifests. This way, before we deploy anything to our development, to our staging, or even to our production cluster, we can be ensured that our Kubernetes manifests follow best practices and don't introduce any vulnerabilities. Now let's take a look at how the tree works, how we can set it up, how we get started, and how you can scale it. Now we are here on the Daytree website. As you can see, prevent Kubernetes misconfiguration from reaching production. Really promising. It's an open source CLI tool that you can get started with right away, so make sure to follow along. As you can see here, you can install the tree with this simple command, which you're going to do in a second. Additionally, when you're getting started with a new tool, you want to have a quick look over the website. You can see the tree has several different integrations, ranging from Helm integration to integrations with different Kubernetes providers, as well as the ICD pipeline tools, such as CircleCI and Jenkins. You can also integrate it with GitHub, as well as GitHub Actions and GitLab. If you have a look, at the Getting Started Guide, it's really easy to follow with additional video tutorials. 
Like mentioned, you can get started with one simple command for macOS as well as for Linux. If you're using Windows, that shouldn't be a problem because you can set up Windows subsystem Linux, which I highly suggest you to do. Now let's go ahead and get started. For that, open your terminal. We are simply gonna paste the command from the starting website and just go ahead and run that. This will install the tree. Now once we have the tree installed, we can see the different commands through the tree and we can just see these are the different commands that we can use. Now the tree also comes with an example. So if we're gonna go ahead and we say the tree and then test, we can see that we can test an example Kubernetes manifest within our Daytree repository. So we're just gonna run this Daytree test and this is gonna verify not only our Kubernetes schema, but also the different rules that we have in place. So as we can see, we have 19 different rules right now in place. By default, there are 21 different rules, but I already turned two rules off and I'm gonna show you in a second how I did that. Now, additionally, up here we can see that our YAML validation as well as our Kubernetes validation has checked has passed but the policy check did not pass we have three different errors within our policy on how we want to write our yaml manifest so while the yaml is written correctly and the schema of our kubernetes manifest is also correctly the policies that we have in place did not pass now we can check the policies if we go to this link that's provided by us in this case this is the sign-in platform. Let's sign in with our GitHub account. GitHub is a single sign-in option provided by the tree. Similarly to how you would use Google or Facebook for other tools and platforms. So let's sign in for my GitHub account. If you're signing in for the first time, you will have to authorize GitHub. So as you can see, here's a search history of my previous day three test runs. If day three is integrated into my CICD pipeline, I will be able to check any previous runs from that pipeline as well, right here. Now I can check the previous runs, what the results were, how many rules were tested, if the schema validation has passed and my policy checks. Let's go ahead and check out the policies that we have in place. As you can see here, these are our built-in rules and we can toggle and untoggle any of the rules that we want to have in place in our policy check. Scrolling further down, I can modify any of the error messages provided if the policy fails. So as you can see here, we do not want to use node port for our service deployment types. So I can specify, please use cluster IP instead, contact Anais Ulis for further information. Now this will link to my GitHub account, meaning once the policy is triggered, so for instance, you try to deploy type node port instead of cluster IP, you will see the error message and you will see the link to my GitHub account. So people know whom within the organization to contact me if you're working within a team. If you're unsure about a specific rule, you can open this information box and you're provided with the documentation and a list with different built-in rules to the tree. Now you can see here the different rules and you can see different information. So let's say you want to have a look at um, ensure each container has a configured memory limit. What does that mean? How should you write that? You will find different examples on how do you actually set the memory limit in this case. Now we can go ahead and we can fix our example manifests. For that we're going to use vim. So we're going to use vim and then open up our file to quickly edit it. Now in this case this is our file and there are several different things that are wrong. First of all, it informed us that the labels are wrong. So we want to set here an owner and in this case, the owner of this file, it's going to be just me, right? Now we want to set a specific container image. It's generally bad practice to use the latest image. So instead we want to use 1.2.1, which is another con like a specific container image that has probably been more tested than the latest image. If I specify just latest tag, it will put just any latest image, any tag that has been pushed previously to that container registry. And lastly, we want to set within limits, we want to set a memory limit memory and then we're just going to specify 128 
Now you can look that all up within the Kubernetes documentation as well as there are links from the Daytree page that I just showed you from the documentation itself as well. So once we've modified this, and as you can see, this is a really comprehensive example manifest, we can go ahead and we can save that. And then we can go ahead and run again our test, Daytree test, and we're gonna test our Kubernetes manifest and check if all the rules passed. Now, as you can see, all the rules, 19 out of 19 have actually passed. None of the rules have failed. Now, what does it mean if the schema is validated or not? If I go ahead again and open up this file, so the Kubernetes schema specifies how the Kubernetes manifest, how the YAML file should actually be written. What is the schema like? Where are the indentation? How is readiness probe, for instance, called? For example, if I change this, the liveness probe in this case, and I'm just gonna say, liveness probe and then I'm gonna save that I'm gonna go ahead right click and I'm gonna run it again DG test <laughs> we can see that now my schema validation has not passed because liveness probe is written with a P uppercase not lowercase so it cannot run the YAML checks because the schema validation of 1.1.8 of Kubernetes schema has not passed. And we can go ahead and we can open up again our dashboard and we can see within here, history, and we can go into our account settings and we can specify the different Kubernetes schema that we are using. So if you're using a different version, for example, you want to use the latest 1.2.1.1, then you can go ahead and do that and use that schema instead. Like mentioned, the tree has several different integrations, which you can find here within the documentation, the Helm plugin, Circle CI, Travis CI, GitHub Actions, as well as GitLab CICD to automate the checks through the tree in your CICD pipeline. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have a look at the Helm plugin. Helm is a really popular tool and I have several different videos that show you how to get started with Helm and why Helm is actually such a valuable tool within the space within using Kubernetes. Now we can go ahead and we can install the plugin through Helm plugin install and the Helm the tree plugin. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this. Helm plugin the tree. Next, we can trigger a test on our Helm chart through Helm the tree test. Now for that, we first need a Helm chart. So we're going to clone this example real quick. I'm going to go ahead and clone this. And then we want to check the Helm chart, the Nginx Helm chart that's within this example. Helm that we test and it's exactly the same thing. Instead of specifying Kubernetes manifest, we're just going to simply specify the Helm chart that we want to cross check. As you can see in this case, we have several different failures within this example chart. So not a really good example chart, right? We shouldn't really use this. So as you can see, the tree helps us not only to check our own Kubernetes manifest that we write, but also to check Kubernetes manifest that we take from the app. I'm a big fan of copy pasting Kubernetes manifest, any resources by the matter online from trusted sources. Now you always want to cross check the sources. You always want to cross check the resources that you're using and as well as a specific manifest for your deployments. So we can now fix this Helm chart before we actually making use of it, right? The tree does not only work with Kubernetes manifests, it also works with Helm charts and it works with, well, any form of manifest. So we could also use customize and actually render the Kubernetes manifest through customize. And then before we deploy them, here within our CICD pipeline, for our CICD pipeline to our cluster, we can cross check that our manifests are actually correct. And the benefit is that if we copy paste, if copy paste, and there's nothing wrong with copy pasting, we ensure everything is correct. If this video was useful, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Your support would mean a lot to me.
If you have any thoughts, suggestions, ideas for future videos or questions on this video, please make sure to join the community chat linked below. Also linked below is a written tutorial which walks you through everything I've detailed in this video if you prefer the written version. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free online learning resources from across the space right to your inbox on a weekly basis. Now I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.